Hey guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whichever applies to you. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Julia. I'm a contemporary singing specialist based in Australia. And today I am reacting, analyzing Phil Collins in the air tonight live. Let's do this. meditative like super serene like the blend of things within that musical texture sounds that were like outside the synths going there was a instrument I never remember the name of it and perhaps I'm even wrong actually but it sounded like that instrument where it's like a hollowed out tube and when you hit it it gives you that like hollow pitched sound there was that in there it feels really atmospheric and there is a serenity in this type of texture where it feels like there's almost like a blanket of sound and things just like swell in and out of the texture. I kind of felt like some of the tension in my shoulders, like just relaxing a little bit. And then we hit this part where the keys started to be a little bit faster um, in the rhythm that they were playing instead of like little bursts and swells of things coming out of the texture. We had something that was a little bit more rhythmic rather than seemingly random. I mean, I don't think that any of the other things are random. It sounds like they're meant to come in exactly when they're meant to come in, but you get what I mean. Like the structure of that rhythm is a little bit closer to perhaps where we think we might be heading. And so that to me is progress within the texture of we're comfortable, we're serene, we've got these blanketed uh, layers with the synths and the atmospheric noises and other instrumentation that's been included in there. And every now and again, we get little percussive tones that like poke out that tonally feel like they shift a little bit away from that serenity that's in those layers. And then we hit this part. Right here, we have a shift in the expectation of what we might think should be coming rhythmically. This to me builds anticipation. So let's get there. I, I really want to see where this goes. The evolution of this texture, damn. We have that lower tonality now coming through. Oh.
syncopation on those keys. Before we keep going, there's just something I want to mention, and I'll mention it now, and then I'm sure you guys will be able to hear it after I uh, point it out, or maybe, or maybe you already heard it. Uh, so Phil Collins has one of those voices that, to me, is really easily recognizable, and that's because there are a few uh, unique things in his timbre that stand out to me. The first is his use of nasality. You can hear it on certain words, and I'll point them out as we go back and we re-listen. Uh, the second is there's a very, very subtle very subtle, almost husky sound to his voice. Like there's a breathiness to his tone without it being outright sounding like he's got too much air going through his sound. I would say it's a very lightly aspirated tone. It's erring almost towards like a little bit of husk, but I, would, I wouldn't I would necessarily call it a super husky tonality, but it walks that fine line between breathy and husky. Um, if you're not sure what aspiration or breathiness is, it's from where that waveform, we've, we've, we've talked about this before on this channel, but I will explain it again just in case some of you are new or haven't watched those videos. Uh, aspiration is caused when the waveform at the vocal fold level has a longer open phase than it does a closed phase or a part of the fold that is not closing, letting the breath flow through. So our waveform for our vocal folds, let's pretend I've opened up the front of my throat here, the vocal folds sit horizontally. Uh, they wave from the bottom upwards, so the air flows them apart, or blows them apart rather, then they have an open phase, and then the air sucks them back together. Now, you can be open for longer than closed, or you can be closed longer than open, and that's going to give you a different kind of vocal production at the vocal fold level, which then has to filter through your vocal tract. So to me, there are times where Phil leans more towards that breathy, almost husky. It's like a fine line that he's walking there, but it contributes to the uniqueness of his vocal quality. And uh, the moment you hear it, you're like, that's Phil Collins. Anyway, so that's my comment on timbre. I think I'll discuss approach in just a little bit, uh, depending on what he decides to do, because I have a feeling that this song is, it sort of lives around the same melodic area, because I've heard bits and pieces of in the air tonight. I'm, I mean, I don't think there's a person alive who's been in like the modern Western world who hasn't heard Phil Collins' voice at least once. Um, and this song, particularly the chorus, you know, the I can feel it, that, that, that chorus, I have definitely heard before, but never within the context of the whole song. Anyway, so I will comment on approach if what he's doing now keeps happening, but I just don't want to spend too long talking right now because it's seven minutes and 41 seconds long. Um, and I want to see what else he does in a live setting.
know who I am. It's it's very going through the nose there. That's an example that I wanted to point out just quickly on the nasality side. Right, couple of points. Uh, the one that took me by surprise was actually the electronic sounding layer that's happening now. Uh, it's not all the time. It's just every now and again on the phrase in the chorus, uh, there's that electronic layer. So I'm just trying to think of how they would be achieving that. The simplest solution would probably be for them to be using a vocoder. So a vocoder is, uh, if you know who uh, Jacob Collier is, he loves using vocoders because essentially it takes your voice that you're singing into the microphone and whatever you're playing on the piano, it like duplicates your voice. And it's not perfect harmonization because it's not very a superhuman, it's not really a superhuman sounding rep reproduction of your sound. So as far as it's sounding almost like a little bit electronic, like non-human, uh, that would definitely be giving you that sound. Otherwise, I'm sure they could probably cue layers within the music live but yeah, so maybe one of those two options, but that really took me by surprise. I wonder what the intention with including that tonality is. Perhaps it's just to build tension. I would be very curious to know how that particular layer being included makes you guys feel as an audience member, because I'm not 100% sure. It almost makes me feel unsettled in a way, because we've already built up. It's not that he's got an aggressive approach. This is what I was going to comment on before and haven't. Um, it's not as if his approach vocally is super aggressive, but there are just tiny things that display like irritation or frustration, but like you're just completely done with something. And it tends to show up in his plosives. So uh, an example, if I go back, would be his jaw and um, the plosive on, I think it was the word bean or bin. I think we're shortening it to bin. Wipe off that green, been. On bin, there's a real b on bin. There are just these subtle decisions that he's making in his vocal approach, whether it's just his lyrics or whether it's also what's happening in the layers. But it's like they're hinting at something to come, which would make sense because the lyrics are in the air tonight and he's singing, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. It truly does feel like musically we're building towards something, but also vocally, there's a very strong level of storytelling here with those subtle choices like the bin, um, his facial expressions. That is how I'm interpreting his vocal choices right now. Where did you talk? So like even the difference in uh, the vocal intensity of what he was doing there, it's not massively different, but we had a little bit more intensity on the first line. What are these lyrics? It sounds like he's saying, if you told me you were drowning. And I just, I just want to double check. All right, so the lyric is, if you told me you were drowning, I would not lend a hand. And his dynamic approach, even between those two lines, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to subtle storytelling, that if you told me you were drowning sounds a little bit more towards that fed up, not necessarily super aggressive. Let's like, let's find a happy medium. I just don't, can't find the word for it right now. Uh, there's that little bit more intensity to that particular line and the, 
I would not lend a hand. He's pulled back. We have that slightly almost breathiness element coming into his sound, but it's a much quieter dynamic. It really almost sounds disturbing, the idea that he, if he saw this person drowning, he would just watch. Like he would watch him die, watch him drown. I, yeah. So those subtle storytelling elements, I'm really enjoying his approach there. Um, and then on the bin, we have more of that pop. He's really, I feel like he's, I feel like he's conveying frustration and being fed up really, really well. So I will Google what this is about afterwards, but that's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, it feels like we're building towards, I don't know, like a colossal battle or the end of something, or I don't know. I don't know. It just, those are the feelings that I'm getting right now. So we are going to keep going. Uh, but bear that in mind. He's doing these subtle things with dynamics, subtle things with his plosives and his articulation that convey emotion. And that's really important as a singer, especially when you're staying around the same sort of melody. So he's being very balanced tonally. Uh, and when he's using a dynamic, he's pretty stable as well, dynamic wise across most of his phrases. So that to me comes across as very intentional. Uh, anyway, we are going to keep going. <laughs> Okay, I can feel we're building towards something. This is like that culmination of every single layer that they have been teasing us with peaks of all throughout the build up to this. This, oh, I feel like suspended in sound and I, I desperately want to know what the end of this story is because I, uh, he's repeating the same lyrics almost, apart from the verses, but he's repeating very similar lyrics and the chorus is a repeat of the same lyric over and over again and yet... I want to feel where we're going. I'm still hyped in this build that's happening in the music. And it's been basically six minutes of build through this music with hints at something that we're working towards. Like, this is fantastic songwriting. Um, if you don't write well with these kinds of conditions, your song's going to get boring very, very quickly. So, I mean, Phil Collins is known as a very, very good songwriter. I haven't listened to a whole lot of his music, if I'm honest. I recognize his voice because it's always stood out as being particularly 
unique and I did um, watch like Tarzan a heap when I was younger. So uh, I recognize his voice immediately when, when I hear other stuff because it stood out to me even as a child as something that was highly recognizable. And um, his music has like a very similar, not, not like a, a, it doesn't sound the same, but there's like, you can hear that Phil Collins flavor in the music as like, as he writes it because it's coming from him. So duh. Uh, but anyway, uh, it still has those elements that I can hear uh, little like sprinkles of in like the Tarzan soundtrack and now and now this song. That's mm. So this build, I am super excited for it. I just wanted to make a quick mention on the fact that he is playing and singing at the same time. Like even just walking and singing at the same time is complicated enough, let alone having your body do something that is rhythmically in contrast to what you have to do vocally. Because it means you're managing two rhythms at the same time, but also physically your body is moving and your voice is inside your body. So, you know, there are lots of things that can go wrong with this. And he doesn't sound like a shaky, juddery mess at all, which is sometimes one of the biggest, most frustrating parts of if you have to move and sing at the same time. When I work with my singer dancers, so I uh, have uh, students and clients who they have to be able to dance and sing at the same time. You spend a lot of time and energy building up the stamina that allows you to stay very relaxed and stable here while the rest of this is doing lots of movement and is engaged underneath for a different purpose. It's one of the things that uh, people who play and sing as well other instruments can probably also sympathize with is there's almost like a division of instruction from the brain between the playing and the singing or the playing and the singing or whatever instrument you happen to play. Of course, a big difference between if you're playing guitar and singing or, or playing the piano and singing is that often those comping instruments can follow the melody or similar rhythms to what's happening vocally. Uh, you might see more similarities in the musical uh, direction of playing whatever you're, whatever you happen to be playing and singing, or at least it might be stable underneath it. It's, it might be repetitive to the point where it's very easy to uh, play them because perhaps it's not a super complicated piano or guitar part. That being said, if it is complicated, then that's something you're going to work around. And experienced people who play and sing know that that takes time. You, you develop that skill of being able to competently play and competently sing at the same time. Uh, very rarely, if you're a beginner at either instrument, are you going to be able to immediately put those two together and have it be like top-notch, super tight singing and playing. It's probably not going to happen. Uh, you need to spend some time and continue to develop that. So the amount of time that has gone into Phil's ability to play but also sing, this suggests to me that he has been playing for a very, very long time because physically he's super comfortable on the kit there and what he's doing on the drums is not not missing a beat. God, I'll see myself out. Uh, it's not missing a beat here, but he's also not struggling whatsoever here as far as keeping a stable tone. That is time, that is experience, that is stamina physical stamina, because as you're working as well, it costs your body something to do this physical movement while at the same time, your, your sound needs breath. It needs air in order to be able to function, in order to phonate at all. You need that steady stream of air. So one of the things that I noticed when I was watching him just then is he's very relaxed in his body. There's a lot of movement here, but he's not jolting himself around too much unless it's within a sort of a musical timing that makes sense for his body to be moving in that way. So that is, that's amazing because it's not like it's a very light, uh, groovy, chilled back drum pattern that he's playing. He's like going in for it. These are expressive drums as far as dynamic is concerned. Like there is, we've, we've hit something here and we're going to keep building. So that's enough on that. I just wanted to mention it because damn, that is, that to me speaks to his, uh, the amount of time he's put into both singing and also drumming his expertise in at least one, if not both of them, and the time he's put into developing the stamina, the physical conditioning to be able to do both at the same time to that standard. Like that's, that's awesome. Uh, anyway, let's, let's keep going and I'll comment on placement and other such uh, vocal decisions at the end. I just, I want to feel where we're going. Phil, what's coming? Tell us.
Oh my God. <laughs> I just had like a knee jerk reaction that made me want to cry towards the end there. That was, that's how you, that's how you do a build. Oh my God. Musical satisfaction achieved. <sighs> Dynamic expression level ultimate. Wow. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what to say. I'm going to need to take like a minute or so, I think, to, to, to kind of like coordinate my thoughts because that became like a very visceral response for me listening to that and how he chose to utilize his voice in amongst that building expressive musical texture that we have been building to this entire time. Oh, okay. I need, I need a minute. Holy shit. Phil, dude. I'll have whatever he's having. Oh my God. Well, I still feel like I haven't really calmed down very much. I still have that like fluttery feeling in my rib cage, uh, in my chest. It's just feeling all like tingly and fluttery. Holy shoot, Phil Collins. What a weapon of a songwriter and a player. Jeez, this is what it did to me through a screen. Imagine being there live. Oh, I might, I might die. Oh. So what really got me in the end there was that ad lib. Because that ad lib, I don't even know if it is an ad lib. What does the end of the song normally sound like? Maybe he does the same at the end of this. Anyway, so I just checked the original recording to see if the end of the original recording is the same as what just happened here, and it's not. It builds a hell of a lot more. His ad-libs in this one just, they drive the emotions so much harder, and he is belting, so for that belting tonality, we've got more mass at the vocal fold level, plus a little bit of twang coming through. Um, his sound sits a little bit forward, but we also start to get more of that like subtle breathy husky sound that was hinted at earlier in his singing. So I wouldn't say that that tonality is a complete surprise because we do hear elements of it, particularly when he's on a softer, quieter dynamic earlier on in the song. But for this belting, having those little tiny like micro breaks, a little bit of a gap in the sound every now and again, it makes it feel like whatever he's built this towards is something that is very emotionally charged for him. And I can't help but respond to that when I'm watching this. I can't necessarily describe what it is that is coming or what we are heading towards, but all I know is that it is intense, it feels very real, and um, I don't know if I'll be the same coming out on the other side of it. That's how that becomes represented to me. That build was amazing, just visceral feelings. For forever because of that. Anyway, let's touch on some vocal choices. So Phil uses a pretty similar setup all throughout. I wouldn't say that he's changing his timbre too dramatically. He's not going crazy on the range either. He's sitting very speechy all throughout the beginning. A lot of his storytelling come from the things that I described earlier. So subtle changes in dynamic and very subtle changes in tone. So when it's a slightly fuller, cleaner sound, we don't get that little breathy husky fine line that we're walking there. Uh, we don't get as much of that and it starts to feel a lot brighter. We get a little bit more twang. There's more closure at the vocal fold level um, that is contributing to that particular sound, particularly as he starts to make more intense vocal decisions. That's where he's heading to. The only exception being as he starts to belt towards the end, he'll start clean and then at the end of the sound, it'll almost break or come apart. Um, not in like a huge amount of the sound, just like right at the end. So as he's leaving it, it truly, it feels so real. Like someone's just pouring out their emotions into that sound because that is what can happen in a similar situation to when you have, say, heightened emotions you're probably not going to be super, super clean uh, vocally. Uh, you're probably going to have voice breaking. Your body is going to be reacting in lots of different ways to adrenaline and other things that are going through your system. So I find that also tied into what gave me a very visceral response to what he did at the end on his ad libs that all contributed and uh, created a fantastic uh, exemplary build vocally and musically towards the end of this song. Uh, but backtracking towards the verses, it's more of those subtle choices that are very important for his storytelling, in particular the way that he 
articulates. He doesn't open his mouth a whole heap until he is belting, but you can see that he is shaping his words uh, with the intention of expressing whatever it is that guided this song. So I'm going to look up the uh, lyrics and like the Google the meaning, I guess, for the song, because now I really want to know what happened that made him want to write this song and go that ham as far as like expressing frustration towards the end. Those drums just, oh, all of the emotions just shoot straight up. Um, but yeah, vocally, it's those subtle things in the beginning in his articulation. In particular, on the bin, he's really shaping the consonants in that word. And yet, at the same time, he's not crushing his vowels, which I think is uh, really good singing. Uh, it tells me that he's a little bit more relaxed in the larynx. His larynx isn't trying to poke up too high because if it was, if we were narrowing in the pharynx and in the larynx, you wind up with something that becomes very compressed. And there's still space in a lot of the words that Phil is singing. So that's just a, an interesting thing to note is his jaw position. He's not over opening his mouth too much in the beginning, but I also don't think it's necessary for the pitch that he's on and the fact that he wants to remain pretty tonally stable around um, sort of a melody that's pretty similar. And in addition to that, that jaw stability, I think would be contributing to the tonal stability, particularly in contemporary. The more we open our mouth, um, the more we shift the sound forward and back because we use a lot of let's say gross tonal approaches to get something that sounds really contemporary, like twang and nasality, almost like you're biting into the sound of the front of your face, sitting in the mask, however you want to describe it. Subtle shifts of the jaw can change that timbre, can start to vary um, a bit more than perhaps you might want. And because he's very almost like stable, it's almost like silently waiting, that stability, again, storytelling, just just, it's just ace, all of the storytelling and build in this, it just culminates. So if I had to describe elements of this song that really sort of create the feelings we feel listening to it, it would be the suspension and the anticipation of that layering within the music, that guitar. There are times where the guitar work almost sounds like a wail. Um, and I mean like someone crying, like that kind of wail, W-A-I-L, not wail as in, not as in like fine and dory wail. Um, let me look at what these lyrics mean and then I'll, I'll do a quick summary of the video. Okay, so I'm on a website. It says, over the years, there've been a lot of talk around the meaning of Phil Collins' iconic song, In the Air Tonight. Commonly believed messages are that it is about a man who could have saved another man from drowning but chose not to. I mean, that's that's pretty straightforward as far as the lyric is, con is concerned, but I I feel like there's too much. Um, it's personal. I feel like it's this has so much of a personal intention behind it. I no, I don't know if I would believe that. Um, and if so, that's pretty intense. Um, oh, in a recent interview with Jimmy Fallon, Phil Collins tells him the truth behind the hit song, which is actually about going through a divorce. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, these lyrics make are starting to, yeah, okay. The intensity of the lyric now makes sense. Like that, oh, like getting to the end of something, just wanting to be done with it. That feeling of like frustration, even the lyric of, I know, um, I know where you've, wipe off that grin, I know where you've been. Like that, oh, okay. Relationships can get really messy and I must admit that to me makes a lot more sense emotionally as far as uh, story build than the drowning thing because the drowning thing, that story doesn't sound very personal and every extra layer and build and intensity in this song made it feel very personal. Anyway, overall, that was a tremendously intense piece from the build in the beginning. I feel like we got the full emotional spectrum and uh, the intensity of every single element of the song, lyrically, vocally, instrumentally. We got all of it as it started to build up towards that peak where it's like true and raw. It feels so honest and authentic at the end there that it, it just, it punched me in the gut and made like my rib gauge start to get that little butterfly -y feeling of holy, holy moly. <laughs> He's going there. Those ad libs at the end just, that pushed me over the edge. Anyways, that is where I'm going to leave that one. I hope that you enjoyed that. Just wow. <laughs> wow. I, I don't even know what else to say about it because I mean, vocally, 
He's not doing super complex, varied things technique wise. And yet it is so powerful and impactful. And no wonder it's an iconic song. And so many people love this. That's brilliant. What a, what a journey. And lyrically, he didn't even say what was coming, but we still knew that whatever it was, it was going to be intense. <laughs> and it was, and it feels genuine and real. Anyway, <laughs> that is it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like, click the subscribe button and the bell notification beside it for more just like this one. As usual, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you are staying healthy. And I will see you next time. I am checking out Phil Collins. I went to say you'll be in my heart. <laughs> oh no. Oh, I watch too much garbage in the air tonight. Idiot. Oh, I took the first pair of thongs off and accidentally wore a second pair down. So now I have no less than two pairs of thongs under the piano. Dang it. I was wondering where they went. Which ones do I, I like the heavy yarns better. Let's swap them. I wanna be comfortable. T-shirts, shorts, and thongs. It's the only way to be in an Aussie summer. What can I say? I'm sweating so much right now. If you're new here, my name is Julia. My name is I'm doing it again. Drat. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Julia. Why am I having trouble saying my name is what? My name is what? My name is Chicka 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 Chicka. Anyway, <clears throat> enough of that.